first started playing about 16. I made a bunch of noises for a year, uh, squawking, squealing, pick scrapes, and then finally I think my family had enough of that. And, okay, it's time for lessons. Um, my first teacher taught me some pentatonics, and then he only wanted serious students for class school, and he pawned me off to a guy, and it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, this guy, Stan Gardaki, um, and he uh, taught me scales and improvising, and basically he would just play chord progressions. He would give me scale patterns and uh, a little bit of theory, and he'd play chord progressions and make me wank for a half hour at a time, and it was just a wonderful experience, and uh, I'm so glad I did it. It was a huge influence. Influences, bunches, just a, a whole pile of players. Uh, I think the thing that made me interested in electric guitar was probably hearing the song Barracuda for the first time. I just hear in that, and it's, what is that? What's making that sound? Well, it's music. Well, but what's what makes that sound? It's a guitar. What do you mean a guitar? It's an electric guitar. I want to make that sound. And um, from there, I just started listening more and more and more and just soaked up everything. Um, Beatles were a huge influence, Cream, Jimi Hendrix, huge influence, and then I started getting serious, um, and then Kiss, obviously, I mean, I think everybody my age was a huge Ace Frehley fan, but I started getting serious the first time I heard Gary Moore, just first time I heard End of the World, it was like, every, not, I just didn't look at the, 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 the world changed as I knew it, it was a, a shift, like, like your first drop acid, what? <laughs> it just, uh, it changed everything. It, it, then, you know, him, Randy Rhodes, uh, Ingve, Akira Takasaki was a phenomenal player that just really changed the way I look, look at things, listen to things. Uh, Wolf Hoffman from Accept, there's just so many, there were so many great players out of the early 80s that couldn't get enough of. My first guitar was out of a Sears catalog, um, and I wish I would have known how cool it was. It was a... Um, something with power sound pickups. It was this big chunk of mahogany with a brass nut. And uh, I, I must have painted, I stripped it and painted it like three different times. <laughs> I mean, black and silver stripes one time, this, that, and the other. It was a poor thing. And uh, I, I ended up selling it to my guitar teacher because I wanted this uh, Hondo 2 Strat that was in Lake Placid Blue. I had to have it. <laughs> Um, raised, in, raised in Western Pennsylvania, and then when I was 18, uh, moved to Columbus. I met a uh, drummer who's been a lifelong friend since then, and he was from Arizona, and uh, he was, didn't want to face another winter in Columbus. We said, hey, come out to Arizona, you know, we've got half-naked women and sunshine most of the year, uh, and you know, we can play gigs. And so I came out to Phoenix and been out here the better part of 20 years. I first heard of Atomic through a friend of mine, Keith Enschinger, who uh, customizes pedals for me. Uh, he, he customized a few of my boss pedals and then uh, built a few pedals for me. And uh, we had tried just about everybody in town for different things, uh, repairs here and things like that. I had dabbled in some parts guitars and never, you know, in, in customizing, you know, old fenders and crap. And finally, I said, you know, I'm tired of modding guitars. I want to just buy one that's made the way I want it, and, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. My favorite Atomic at the moment is this one because, well, it's my only one. <laughs> but um, I've had it for almost a year now, and I can't put it down. And I liked it so much, I wanted to get a, uh, a little brother with a wiggle stick on it, and uh, my friends here are making one as we speak. Uh, Battle Scars, uh, Galactia, we've only got a few little dents here and there, not too shabby for uh, a year's worth of abuse for me. I think most of the abuse I've done, uh, as you can see, a little crack right here because I have a, a habit of doing that occasionally and I think that's led to a, a few issues that will be uh, corrected. But overall, uh, she's holding up pretty fine, but let's, talk, let's look at her another 20 and see what we get. <laughs> Right now, uh, I'm a band whore. I'll basically play with anybody who'll give me a beer and gas money. Um, actively, uh, I'm playing with, well, for about the last 12, 13 years, I've been playing with Free Will, Rush Tribute. 
um, play in an 80s cover band called Vinyl Tab. Um, I play with some guys in a classic 60s band called Factory, do a bunch of Cream and Beatles, uh, play in a Jewish wedding band. Um, and uh, last month I had a blast uh, subbing uh, for Dave while he was on vacation for Whiskey Six. Uh, wonderful experience. I'll play with anybody. Musical highlights uh, happen so often, it's, it's hard to pick any one. I mean, it's nice to, to actually, after years of practicing, to, to get gigs and to get money for it, but it's usually just those moments when you're improvising and, and you hit on something that uh, you've been working for that finally feels natural as, a, as opposed to, I'm trying to learn a technique, I'm trying to learn this theory example. And then when it becomes natural, so there's those little moments when you're playing and things just kind of fall together and you get you ride that wave and it's just magical. Uh, no immediate plans for the future except just to, to, to play as much as possible and to just to learn as much as possible. I just love to study, I love to pick up new things. I, I listen to classical, I listen to jazz horn players and I'm still learning things from listening to Jakey e. Lee and all my other favorite players uh, from the 80s, so just, just learn, to learn as much as I can. <laughs> ¶¶